But we'll get going because I want to make sure plenty of time in the second half to walk through some actual Excel this. So the second half, you will need access to a computer. Here your own computer, you can always log into these ones because we'll be like walking through the steps of how to use our mock data sheet um, and just running some kind of basic reports in Excel. I am recording this version uh, in video format so that way you can go back and like rewatch that second half especially, um, but I think it will be more helpful if you can just follow along if that's your learning style. So just kind of be aware. Um, all right, so Wednesday, part two. Hello. Uh, we're just continuing, right, measures of success. We're going to be a bit more specific with what we like to or we tend to use in public relations. Um, and then, of course, look at that mock data set. Uh, but first, a little insider scoop. Um, there is a scholarship contest. So for those of you who still have at least a semester left, I know many of you are graduating, but if you're not, um, Lucian, who is the maker of degree works, basically, and like how our registration system, they're like an ed tech company, they have this $2,500, they're giving away three, I believe, $2,500 scholarships for just educational expenses. All you need to do is, you know, submit a 30 second video. It's only open to Colorado students. And this morning, my contact over at the company was like, hey, we don't have any submissions yet. Will you do another, you know, push with your, your students in your community? So if you literally submit anything, you have a good chance of uh, maybe getting some of the scholarship. Now they are specifically looking for, again, just 30 second kind of video. Of you talking about Viola Davis, award-winning actress. She actually was a first-generation college student. She went through the CHE kind of trio program. Um, really kind of like how her story, her journey, her work kind of inspires you to, you know, be and help the community um, is the general kind of guidelines and pitch. And so if you're interested in that, again, the only kind of limitation is it's, you know, for educational expenses. So obviously you'll need to have future expenses that you can pay. Um, but to learn more about it, you can just go to our Student Academic Success homepage. Um, and at the bottom, we have kind of the links of how you can submit it. The deadline is March 25th, so that's Friday, right? Yes, Friday. Um, but again, in my like little in insider PR email, uh, she said that they're considering extending the deadline to next week if they don't get any submissions. But I think you can pull together a nice 30 seconds, um, you know, talking about her work uh, by Friday. So that's just really good, cool opportunity. That's obviously, you know, pretty good chunk for not a ton of work. So keep an eye on that. Think about it. Um, let your friends know. Of course, I've, you know, shared it out with as my ethical obligation to my colleagues. Shared their students, but, you know. Probably not a lot of people are going to be submitting. And the fact that she said they have no submissions as of this morning, I think it's pretty good odds um, that you might be able to compete for that. So super cool opportunity. Get it in and do it. All right. Um, so turning back to and kind of a refresher of what we talked about right on Monday, kind of that very, very basic framework of just how to evaluate and kind of make progress on goals, campaigns, whether it's at work, whether it's in school, whether it's personal, right? There's three core things that go into a good evaluation process, right? It's what, so making sure you have a very concrete, very clear, this is exactly what I am trying to achieve, that you can measure, um, that you can see what that end game actually is. We talked about hows. Right, so make sure you have really good action verbs so you know exactly the tasks, the ways that you're going to get to your what. And then wins are very important. We have to set some sort of endpoint where we actually will evaluate how much progress we have made. Uh, so I'm just kind of curious in your own life. Again, it could be your personal goals. It could be maybe you know, your homework goals, your academic goals. Where do you see your growth areas? I feel like for me, again, yeah, we're always growing, at least I think, right? We can always find a growth area. Uh, I definitely do resonate uh, with the win. I kind of 
find myself often on like a, a running timeline. I'm just like, ah, I just got to keep stacking it up. So I can definitely resonate with that. Um, and I definitely am getting better and better. I have to very intentionally set clear what. Like you, I'm going to do this, but then forget, okay, actually how measurable is that? So, yes, yeah, sticking to an actual win is tough. So I encourage you to think about uh, some of the ways I can help with our win um, is I like to think of it as clearing the path, right? So if we have, I imagine, an elephant, because that's what comes from the actual framework. I, I pulled this from. You'll learn much more about that when you watch the video for Friday. Um, but think about an elephant or whatever other big kind of animal resonates with you. That's our motivation, kind of our willpower. That's like ourselves marching towards the goal. Um, and so we can kind of clear that path out of the way and set smaller check marks. So maybe your big win is in, you know, four weeks, right? end of April. That's your, your actual win. I need to have this, this, and this done. Right? You know you need to have your three PR credits done basically by the end of April. So maybe we set some smaller wins to help us get there. So, okay, at the end of every week, so Sunday at noon, I'm going to really check in and be like, what did I accomplish this week? And so that's one way that we can help ourselves stick to our big win by setting smaller ones. Um, definitely can help. We also like to talk about things like action triggers can help with that. And so it's, okay, when I brush my teeth, right? Something that's just in our routine, in our habits, you know, we're pretty much doing every day, ideally. Um, you know, is that when you can sort of say, okay, I'm going to just reflect on how much homework I got done today. How many pages did I read today? Did I do X, Y, Z today? Um, and so we can set up, again, kind of smaller wins um, through action items and action triggers that help us stick to it. Because it's like, you know, another classic one, uh, when you're waiting for your coffee or like your tea to brew in the morning, is a great time to like do things like check your bear mail. A lot of students I talk to are like, I'm not good at checking my email regularly. That's a really hard win that I'm just not sticking to. Put it up, you know, every morning, you're eating your breakfast, you're waiting for the coffee, boom, that's when you're going to check your email. So I get that. And there's lots of little tricks, but you do have to kind of go out of your way and be intentional with how am I going to stick to some of these timelines for me. Cool. And, of course, at work, that gets a little bit easier because your boss is going to be like, we need the quarterly report, so you're going to do it because they say that you need it. But it definitely is helpful to set more of those so you're not super stressed and then writing like a bad report because you didn't leave yourself enough time. Cool. I love it. Yep. So we uh, started going over this on Monday, but as a refresher, kind of that sort of the core pieces of what we're looking at when we're measuring campaign success, especially um, these are the things that are going to help us actually make future decisions. And that big picture to remember is evaluation and going through all these steps and figuring out what your KPIs are. They're all oriented around you being able to make future decisions. And if you're already like, I'm not going to change anything about what I do, then what is even the point of evaluating? Right? We want to evaluate so we can make better decisions in future. So first, right, we had our inputs. Those are things from our situational analysis. It's all the stuff coming in, uh, the things that your client says. It's their vision, their goals, all your pestle factors. That's all part of your inputs that we start off baseline. That's what we know we are working with. So that way we know how much to improve, change what we're going to be doing. After we know our inputs, right, we're going to set up our objectives. That's where our how or what, how, and when really come into play. Make sure they're smart, right? We're thinking achievable, realistic. Never forget those aspects. Uh, and making sure we have concrete. This is actually, actually what we're doing. Um, this is how we're going to accomplish it, how we're going to measure it, and when we're going to do that. Activities, the actual content of the campaign, right? It's just the stuff that you do along the way. And then we get into the actual kind of measurement pieces that we'll dive into a lot deeper today. So our outputs, those are, some, you might call them like the basic um, metrics. 
Uh, a lot of times outputs end up being a bit more on the quantitative side. So it's like the numbers that we can pull from our platforms, uh, from you know, circulation rate, subscribers, that kind of stuff. Um, definitely important, but we usually aren't going to just report outputs because outputs by themselves need a little bit more to help make them meaningful for your stakeholders. You're gonna have to do a little bit more so you know you know, how is it going to inform a future decision? What does it mean in context? But we always, you know, you got to start with some outputs. Then we have our outtakes. These are much more about actions. Um, in the response, we're thinking more on the audience side. You know, what actions are they taking? Those are great things that we can measure, whether it's, oh, they saw our article and then they clicked right back to our website and then they added things to the shopping cart or they donated to our cause, right? It's something that somebody kind of actually has to do, and so we measure the actions. Outcomes are much more about kind of their attitudes, perceptions, and so outcomes tend to be more of like, you know, what are they reporting on their uh, surveys, their customer satisfaction surveys? What are they tweeting about us? Um, so outtakes tend to be more of like the actual activity um, that, that your audience is taking based on your, you know, campaign, your messaging, outcomes much more related to how people are feeling and talking about you. But I almost always just combine them into one category when I'm sort of reporting on it, because uh, I think it usually makes more sense to stakeholders right, to just talk about actions and attitudes in one go. And then last is the impact. Uh, this is definitely what things like your CEO um, is probably going to be very interested in. And these are those long-term effects that your public relations work, the value you're adding to the company. So it's really the change uh, that you're bringing about. So that's like the core framework to know, to remember, to distill it into like, I think, easier kind of categories. I sort of have four big areas. And if you remember and complete and at least try to, you know, revolve your work and your evaluation around the big four, it's going to help collaborate across departments, right? So if you're working with the marketing team, you can kind of share, oh, here's how our PR campaign was going, here's our baseline, here's our metrics. Maybe it can complement more of what the sales team is up to. Or you definitely want to collaborate with the content marketing team, the social media team, and you might be one in the same even. Um, but you're also going to be able to collaborate with even things like you know, our friends in the business side and the accounting and the, the leadership. You just want to be able to share out. And these kind of four things we'll talk about help us do that. Um, and ultimately, again, aligning right, all of our content with actually what we're doing. We're in a real age of data-driven decisions, it's kind of the big buzzword of professional life. So at least in higher ed, everybody's talking about we need to have data-driven decisions. Uh, and so this is where it comes in, and there's a lot of value. People are very keen right, to hire and to promote and to pay. Uh, folks who are really good at taking data and then reporting like here's some decisions that are backed by this data what we can do uh, and then ultimately the whole goal is to just improve for the future so first define the objectives those are measurable they lead us to the goal and so we do want to be again it's our what's specific usually in PR you're probably going to throw some sort of number probably some sort of percentage in there so it could be things like right we want to have a good open rate on our pitches. And when you're out you know, working for a real kind of PR agency company, it is likely that you'll be using some sort of software. Muckrack is a really big one, uh, but there's a lot of companies that actually track open rates on your emails for you. So this is a number you could get. You know, right now you're using Outlook for your client projects. Uh, you can't, it's not really set up to do that same kind of thing. But if you're you know, really out there in the world, in the environment, you're probably gonna have some software that helps you and you'll say, you know what? I have excellent open rate. I have 50% of all my pitches are being opened. This is fantastic. Um, and so you might put something specific like that. You could also right, focus more on, yes, it's a qualitative sort of oriented uh, what and metric, right? We're thinking about sentiment of folks. There's different ways to measure that, but the goal is still, what direction do you want the sentiment to change? By how much are you hoping that it changes? And that's what kind of gives you that really strong, we accomplished this goal, or we almost accomplished this goal, we need to readjust to get the rest of the way there. 
So in your objectives, think about putting some sort of number so you know if you reached it or not. Have some sort of kind of directional, something like increase, decrease, stay the same. Uh, some sort of kind of action you could measure tend to help. The second one, identify your outputs. Right? So again, those are those kind of basic, but not in like a bad way. They're just fairly easy to grab. Usually almost all the platforms are going to have them. Um, and those are things if you're dealing with a social media campaign, right, the outputs are going to be the views, the likes, um, that kind of stuff, right? The kind of real basic, yes, we can see the reach, the impressions, all going to be outputs you can report. Right? Reach, view, hooray. We can also think about outputs like costs. Remember, PR, we love earned media, helps us show our value. And we say like, ah, oh, we got all this stuff and we didn't have to pay for it. But there are certainly times where maybe we do have to pay a bit of a fee. Uh, maybe we boost a post, that kind of stuff. So you might think about, okay, how much did it cost you know, to run this campaign? That is also a valuable output that you might report on. Or on the flip side, look how much we reached and we didn't pay for it. And here's kind of the output of how much we saved the company. Um, you could also think about things like just the number of you know, shows you landed, number of radio spots, number of interviews. Again, fairly basic, good output to report. If you are, we see this a lot with like, you know, maybe book publishers, a lot of publicists, right, working in entertainment, right, they tend to go on press tours. So you want to talk about, okay, how many of these did we actually get? How much airtime was it? Um, and relate that back to reach views. Third, and this is where I combine those outtakes, which are technically the actions, outcomes, which are technically the attitudes into one category. I just think it makes it easier to remember. And people I present to, my stakeholders I've worked with, have never been like, oh my gosh, why didn't you separate the outtakes from the outcomes? So, you know, mileage will vary. But basically, you just want to make sure you have some of those more advanced metrics about the audience. So the output tends to be more about the platform or about your content, like how it's performing. Outcomes are much more about the audience's reception of it. And so this is where you can do things like redo your pestle analysis, right? Compare it to that very first stage of your input. Say, okay, you know, we had all of these really kind of neutral to negative perceptions, you know, on our whatever economic side, on the social issue. After our PR campaign, our pestle analysis reports much more neutral to positive. Right? And that's how you could kind of um, report that out back to your stakeholders. Be like, yes, look how, look how good we did. You might also do things like linking traffic right back to your target sites. So they actually, because of your campaign, took the action to go to the site that you wanted them to, to download your workbook, to you know, use your coupon, whatever it is. And then last, big kind of four category is that impact. I always want to be thinking about the impact because that tends to be what folks in the C-suite especially like. Um, outcomes and impacts are usually kind of also where things like the money leads to. Um, so we want to get really good at explaining the impact of our work uh, out to folks. And so this is where you're looking at longer trends. Right, so it's not just, oh, we got this little spike in traffic back, like that's good, but can you look over the whole quarter or you know, two, three quarters, a whole year and say, look, since we started doing this new kind of PR campaign, the traffic has continued to steadily increase. That's going to be really meaningful compared to just like one you know, little month spike or something. Uh, also, we can think about over the long run, you know, how much money we saved. And we can do that by doing things like a competitor analysis. So let's say, all right, one of your top competitors is going through a big crisis. Their PR campaign did not do good media training. They said something terrible in an interview. You can kind of analyze that and, and start to estimate and report, you know, maybe how much money are they losing because of that. And then you can turn around and report it. Like, we have not had that kind of crisis because we do really thorough analysis and we make sure we do all this media training and so now we are saving the potential loss of, you know, however many millions because of a crisis. Um, and so those are really good ways that you can go through that. With internal PR as well, this could be where you say, because, spoiler, not so spoiler, I don't know, 
Hiring people is super expensive. Like there's a lot of costs that go into employee turnover from the actual hiring process to the time that then the search committee has to spend like reviewing them, interviewing them. Like there's just a lot of costs associated. Then there's new training. You maybe have to get them certified. Um, and so you can also use this work if you end up more on the internal side of kind of like look how much better our employee retention is since we've started this you know, particular internal PR campaign. I think we, you can estimate how much money you're sort of saving by like just keep people on board and making them you know, even more like efficient or satisfied in their jobs. So there's like basically an endless amount of you know, these specific sort of metrics, the things that you'll actually report on. It really depends on your industry, your company, what campaign is, but no matter what, you can always, and should always go back to these big four things to set yourself up for a really strong kind of analysis and report. Objectives, have a really clear picture. This is what we try to achieve. Yes, no, almost, we got there. Your outputs, basic metrics, you're always gonna collect those. Outcomes, impact, think what do the bosses want? They wanna know what actions and attitudes their customer base has. They want to know how you help the company in the long run. Make sense? Yeah. It's a little intimidating sometimes, kind of a lot of pressure, but stick to these four. You'll be just fine. Um, and so and you can access this slide on Canvas as well to kind of refer back to the articles you're reading this week, kind of go into them a lot. Um, but some of the most common metrics that you might think about. So from our basic side, again, it's followers. If you're on social media, we consider followers, we call a vanity metric, because by itself, it doesn't have a lot of meaning. Um, and so it's more of like followers plus, you know, here's the sentiment. Here's how, you know, people are sticking with our community. But you could do followers. Reach is something every platform will report back to you. Reach is the number of unique accounts on that platform that are seeing your content. So it's, it's very helpful that way keywords you know that are coming up in the comments that kind of stuff pretty basic recall all the way back from our audience i think it was like week three at the beginning of the semester right psychographics more about psychology what people are thinking attitudes so that's where you're measuring reactions share of the conversation right if you're in the i don't know dog food space how much are people talking about your brand compared to Purina, right? it's share of conversation. Uh, and then community retention. Do you have you know, your followers constantly like going up and down and up and down? Why are people leaving? Those are things you can look into and report. Channel specific, again, this will always just depend. right? YouTube has very specific things that they can report out that Pinterest you know, doesn't. Or Instagram has things that you can collect data on that uh, Twitter is not going to have. So you need to make sure you think about what platform your campaigns are launching on and then be more specific with that. But some things could be common, link clicks for social, for web, for blogs, anything related to traffic. But you can also, you might have to pull even things like Nielsen ratings if you end up on a TV morning show and say like, hey, this show you know, averages this amount of ratings. If you can even get it you know, for the ratings on the episode that your person, your brand was on, that's gonna be even better. And then behavioral, that's where we tend to get things like key actions that people are doing. Are they actually signing up for the keynote that your you know, CEO is going to be a part of, saves and shares? So not exhaustive, not extensive. You can always think of more. It's kind of our job in PR to think about what is meaningful for our campaigns. But these are some good ideas to get you going. So what is the difference? between an output and an outcome. They all feel very similar. We've talked about outputs, outtakes, outcomes, impacts. What are, I feel like the differences between these two are the most uh, starkly different. So kind of describe in your own words, if someone's like, hey, why, why do you have outputs and outcomes? What's the difference for your campaign? to do. Perfect. Mm 
if you're a little stuck, they're like, you can think of it kind of as a hierarchy, I suppose. Hierarchy in terms of how easy or difficult it is to find that info. And so outputs are sort of at the uh, bottom tier in terms of how you can collect that data, where it comes from, if it's gonna outputs, and then outtakes tend to be the next sort of easiest. Outcomes, a bit harder, because you're looking for you know, some very different things that have to be measured in a little bit more critical ways. Out impacts at the top. Put the logistical and quantitative aspects. Oh, I like that. I like thinking about it in terms of like logistics. I think that can be a helpful word because definitely things like costs can kind of come in there. Outcomes, yep, tend to be more qualitative. The effect of it, love that. Output, yep, very data type, um, especially, and just make sure, you know, for yourself, you're thinking about, you know, because outcomes have data as well, but it's that very like traditional numbers driven data, love that. Yep, engagement views, easy to determine, definitely a good thing to mention. Um, and yeah, outcomes, uh, our goal, I'll just uh, make sure you don't distinguish too much, like outputs might still speak to the goal of the campaign, right? So they both can go into goals or both there to help you measure your goals. Um, but yes, outcomes definitely tend to be a bit more um, long-term sometimes. Uh, they tend to be a lot more of like community-centered goals um, that we have less control over, right? Our outputs, we tend to have a little bit more since it's tied to the content and we can change the content really easily, much harder to sort of change other people's action. Cool. Yeah. So, you know, just keep those in mind. Definitely, I think it's some of the trip ups, but when you're reporting out on success, make sure that you, at the very least, right, have your outputs, some of those more basic platformy type metrics, and those outcomes so you can show people how valuable and how helpful you are. Good job. Um, there's like some more kind of specific ones. Again, if you're going to become a strategist, you'll really learn a lot more about it, but just be aware. Right, there's cognitive, so it's more of that brain-based. Do people understand the message? Right? Do they like literally get what's happening with your message? You can think about attitudinal sort of outcomes, so it's more of how they feel. We often, you know, look at this, especially. Can you find any of those like emotional connections? And then the cognitive are more about the action. So that's where we often talk about it is an outtake uh, instead. So yeah, outcomes, again, the big picture of outcomes is much more of that kind of psychographic behavioral stuff from your audience and a lot less focus on the content itself. I'm gonna play with some data now. Let's do it. Yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot about this little video. That's okay, I wanna get to the Excel. Um, but just know, I guess it's only one minute. There are a lot of tools and software, so there's just like literally one example that I found. I was reading their blogs for industry analysis insights. Um, but this is a company called Coverage Book. Um, and so this is a quick one minute walkthrough of like how they help, and their company for public relations agencies, um, how they help with some of these metrics. Just kind of a place where you can organize it, share it. Um, and so again, there's a lot of tools. For you, you have to do this manually, but you only have three things in your client project, so I think you can handle it. Um, then you can see it, there's a lot of tools that make it really easy to go back and kind of understand what your coverage is, is like. A second, and so here we can see, right, they're reporting out for you, and this is something you can get, right, from Instagram or wherever you post it. You know, but some of these, a lot of these sites, what they're doing is kind of, uh, 
curating um, and probably using a, an API to pull in that data to one spot. So instead of having to go over to Instagram and pull it for the post and then going over to your Pinterest and then your Twitter, it'll like pull it all together for you um, and be able to see that. But we can see, okay, views, right? Good output that we get a lot. We like to pay attention to that. Uh, engagement, depending on how deep of the engagement we're going, sort of crosses the line between output, outtake, um, but again, some of those really common ones we like to see. Like, are people actually commenting and liking? And then if they are commenting, what are they saying? And that's where you can get more of the outcomes. Cool. Yay. So just be aware, I mean, new versions of these are gonna continue to come out. So it'll just depend what company maybe you end up working for. One of your tasks might be evaluating to figure out which software that you want to look at, but the big picture is you don't have to do it all by hand. There's a lot of tools out there that are helping PR folks organize their outputs, outcomes, so that way they can more easily visualize and understand their impacts. Oh my gosh, why does it always do that? All right, okay, let's go through um, some real basic kind of data visual stuff. Um, and I'll show you the little mock data set that I made for you. So on your own devices, go ahead and pop over to Canvas um, and we will download the mock data set and I'll show you kind of the number one thing. I, it's called a pivot table. Maybe you've used them. Awesome, if you have it, now you'll know how. Like I learned how to do these sort of later on at work and I figured out, I was like, why did nobody tell me how to do this? So helpful. So that's what we're gonna focus on today and then it unlocks the ability for you to just do a lot of other stuff. So if you're on the homepage, I don't know why it keeps opening week 10, but we're on week 11, evaluating campaign success. Um, so if you go into the lecture review page for week 11, um, this is where you can, of course, access the slide deck. You can see the media list as well. Um, to help with your, your client stuff. And under Wednesday, go ahead and download the mock data set and it should open an Excel file for you. Yeah, actually download. And let's open it up. So I made this with a, and um, it's really cool. Like definitely I, if you have to do any kind of like practice or projects or anything where you need faux data, this website's really cool. But once you have it open, um, you can see this is all like obviously faux, but I've put in some really key things. So we have, right, our publications. We wanna be tracking, right, who is publishing our work, where are those PR things coming from? And also do any trip ups, do we have the Excel sheet? Good. Um, I've already, you know, had it load in coverage type. So in our faux, you know, life, we have podcasts, videos, TV spots, um, and print and radio. Um, a published date, I had it set for just like this semester. And then media impressions, right? And so the impressions um, are really kind of, you take, it's a super basic equation. You take the number of you know, times that outlet talked about you, um, how many, you know, if it, they broke it into two different stories, that kind of stuff. Um, and you basically just multiply it by like their circulation numbers or subscriber numbers. Uh, depending your, your ads team, definitely is gonna be able to get this information from their marketing department. Maybe they'll share it with you. You might have to be a little creative, but in here we just put some mock ones in. Um, so that's what media impressions are. Social mentions, right? So this is kind of how many people are tagging or specifically mentioning our faux brand. Share a voice, this is a scale of zero to one, one being 100% essentially. Um, Message pull through, this I had set up on a scale of zero to three. Um, message pull through is something that you would have to kind of go through and be like, okay, in this article, there were you know, three key points. How many of those three key points you know, came to be? So that's what this column is kind of representing for us today. So in this example, two of our three key points were talked about you know, on this podcast. You feel like, okay, that came through. Sentiment. Zero to one, zero being a really negative sentiment, one being a very positive is our scale. Um, I just like put it again, come up with different mock ones. So I just put in some buzzwords or like, we'll operationalize, operationalize this. It's like 
the predominant sentiment or like word that keeps coming up in people's reaction to the coverage. Um, so I just put in some like, on a scale of like super bad PR, like people think it's racist, horrible, to like super good PR, like you're really innovative. Um, so that's just what that means. And then direct traffic, we'll imagine these are us tracking the links back to our you know, website. So those are the columns that we have set up. And so that's this page and there's 500 rows of data I believe we have in here. Um, then I also went ahead and just set up it for you so you could kind of track your client data. Obviously you'll have like three, maybe four rows. Um, and so things in green, you definitely should be able to sort of try and get or you should really strive to try and get. So the publication, what type it was, you know, if you saw that it got published or if they let you know when it was supposed to be published. Um, if not, then you can report on sort of the dates that you sent out and got any kind of confirmation. Um, message poll, again, if you see or you hear the coverage, you should be able to identify that. Kind of the sentiment, do you feel like the coverage was positive, negative? Have you heard feedback? Um, things in yellow, um, you probably aren't going to be able to, oh, things in yellow you might be able to get, and I'll show you on this tab how you can calculate loosely media impressions for your clients. Um, if it ends up on social media, you know, you could talk about that. Um, direct traffic, maybe, I know some of you are more involved with your clients, so you might be able to get that access to the website. Um, and then things in orange, like you probably aren't going to be able to get, so you can delete those. But this is, you know, a starting thing. At the very least, try to get some of these green ones for your analysis. And then the third tab, I just put some maybe helpful data. And so, for example, right, media impressions. If you go to UNC Today and they publish a story about your client one time, right, we know that, um, well, UNC Today goes to faculty and staff. Right? So here's the number of how many faculty and staff automatically get that email. So that's how you could calculate an impression. Same with if you do around campus. This is how many undergrads um, are enrolled based on our spring 2022 census. Okay, so you can kind of get some practice with media impressions and we'll use that as kind of the proxy. Um, same with even like Bear News. Yes, we know that YouTube doesn't get nearly as many views, but it's like technically being pushed out to that community. Um, so to be kind of helpful. I also found um, this similarweb.com. So you can put any like URL uh, in there and it will give you some um, basic analytics on like its web visit. So if you end up getting something in the Greeley Tribune, you can use this number as kind of a proxy of you know, how big their community is. And here's the population of Weld County. So just kind of get you started. Again, you're the PR professional and consultant so you can put figure out more ways to start calculating your success, but those are some things that you'll want to think about for your client project. All right, back to the mock data set. What we're going to do um, is create a pivot table. So if you're on the mock da data tab uh, and you go over up to your insert up here, over here is right, all these pivot table things. And so what pivot tables are going to do um, is basically give you an interactive way to organize your data and it will also generate graphs for you. So we just click on uh, the pivot table thing and you can just boop, click on it. It comes up with this little um, you know, dialog box. Make sure that you put it in a new worksheet or else it's gonna like cover up your data. Um, unless you have a lot of room. And so this table range is saying, okay, where, like, what is the data that you want? Um, and it's already doing it, like it recognized which cells have data for us. And we can see that with the green little squiggles there. Um, so, and I just accidentally clicked, which is a bummer. So if that happens, just cancel, click on it again, and you'll be good to go. So when you press okay, um, it, it opens up, hopefully it opened up a new sheet for you. Hooray, this is your pivot table sheet. So on this side is all the different fields. So we can see, right, these are our top headings from our Excel sheet. Um, and so we can drag and drop these different things in to analyze, right, the different aspects. So let's just say, let's start with coverage type. If we drag coverage type down to the rows, now we can see it, it auto-populates our different coverage, which is really great. So we can, now we'll be able to see, okay, what is maybe our most, um, well, we'll pick a data, a data set. So let's just start with something like impressions, right? 
fairly, you know, a nice good output metric, what's getting us the most impressions. Field, click on the impressions and drag it over here into the views. Um, it, it generates, okay, what is, you know, that's just like, oh, that's just like a lot of data. Doesn't feel super great, super meaningful. And so there's a few really cool things that we can do. Right now, it's reporting a sum of the impressions, which is good. We can see, okay, over the course of our, you know, four-month campaign, we had, oh, where are the commas going to be? One, two, like, what, million impressions or something? There's a lot. Um, and you can see the total, right, the sum from all these different ones. If you right-click, you will have the option to summarize values in different ways. Um, and so this is one way. If you do count, let's change it to count. This will tell us, right, of the 500 PR things that we got for this client, you know, 96 of them were videos, and 100 of them were radio. 100, we had the most, right, TV spots. So doing count gives you just that, a count of how many, you know, are appearing in that column. Sum gives you, obviously, the, the sum. If we right-click again, let's um, change it. Let's go back to, oh, we well, can do average. That's also really helpful. Um, you know, average is a nice kind of metric, especially over time. So we keep it as an average. You can go through and do things like, you know, change the number of decimal places. So we go back to home. Under number, this is where you can manipulate your decimal places. Um, I should have highlighted them all first. And so you can just go, I think, whole, whole numbers, right? This is impressions. We don't need um, partial numbers on impressions because that doesn't really make sense. And then one of the last things we can do, if you don't want to see just the average, right click again, and we can show values as percentages. So maybe, okay, we have like our um, averages in there. You can do things like grand total, um, uh, which averages don't really play very nicely with that. So I would summarize the values maybe as the sum again. There we go. So now we can see, okay, 25% of all of our media impressions came from TV. And so do we start to see how we can change raw data into something a little bit more meaningful um, than when we go back and tell our stakeholders, okay, this is why, team, we're going to really focus this next quarter on TV because, you know, we're just getting more bang for our buck with TV. A quarter of all of our stuff is going from that. Or maybe on the other side, you see a lot of potential for growth. It's like, okay, maybe, you know, online videos. They're not performing too badly. I think we could invest more time into them so you can get more impressions. That's kind of the basic um, way to do that as well. Um, you can create a graph. So obviously, numbers and tables are fine. Graphs are often better, especially for people that just want to know what's the impact, right, of this. Um, and so to do that, we just go back over to our pivot table analyze. Um, and then on kind of the far side, you see like recommended tables and then pivot charts. So if you click on the pivot chart, it's going to bring up the dialog box to make, you know, a, like you can make whatever, pie charts and bar graphs. Um, but the nice thing about this compared to maybe how you've done it before, if you manually do it, is the chart will change as you change the pivot table. So let's say we are going to make a, right, we're dealing with parts of a whole, so pie charts obviously make a lot of sense there, so we can do a basic pie chart. Boop. And you can go through and like add, you know, all the different little qualities. Um, if you go over to the design for your chart, this is where you can add, you know, the different elements, kind of all of those sort of basics there. But let's say, so right now it's right, it's doing coverage type. If we go into our access categories and just pick something else. So get rid of the coverage type and instead, um, you know, I don't know, maybe we want to do buzzwords. All right, so now we can see it change. The graph changed to now show our buzzwords, um, which is actually for even distribution, you know, mock data, you never know. Um, and it updates our table as well. So now we can kind of see, okay, the most people, right, said that we are untrustworthy. So now we know our next campaign should focus on changing, right, the sentiment of our audience from 
them calling us untrustworthy, you know, to something more about like industry leading. So pivot tables are just immensely helpful um, and just something that you definitely want to spend a little bit of time playing around with. There's a lot of stuff that you can actually do. So in like the legend column, you can add um, other stuff over there. So maybe we say, I want to know if there is a difference in the publication type with the buzzwords coming up. So you could do coverage type, drag it into the legend in the series, and so now it starts to tell you, okay, online video, um, and you can see like how kind of how the different percentages pull out for like the online video. Um, and so for this is where it gets a little bit like messy and tricky. Um, and we're like wrapping up today. But if you're going to be using columns, you always want to really think about this, just kind of do, you know, you're good, you're all super awesome, intelligent, critical thinker, so you're going to have to like do that. So right now it's summarizing values and showing them as percentage of the grand total. So you can change it to be like, okay, do I want to know the percentage, okay, within online video, you know, what is the leading buzzword that we're getting? That would be a column total. It's like going down the column. If you want to know who is telling us keywords of best, Right now you're going across the row, so you'd want to do a percentage of a row total. So we can see how it changes. So now we're saying, okay, all of these, the rows, add up to the grand total at the end of the row. And now you see the column doesn't add up to 100 anymore. Um, and so this is where you can say, okay, of all of these platforms, our radio coverage had people saying, wow, your company is the best. So our, our favored audience, maybe they're listening to radio. I, or on the flip side, you'd say, you know what, 30% uh, of people who watched our online videos thought we were kind of racist. So now you can really use that to strategize, like, what, what did we do? What did we say? What is something about the visual of our online video coverage that made people think that? Cool. So what I encourage you to do, um, and I, um, you know, set up like a practice activity, but also just practice on your own. Use this data set, now that you have it, play around with and you know, test different ways to set up your pivot tables. Um, see what kind of, you know, of these like graphs and things you can do. Pivot tables are just one of those things that are just really fun to kind of play around with. Um, and I will, there's some really good YouTube videos that kind of walk through even more advanced pivot table stuff. Um, but I would definitely just encourage you to spend some time playing around in this mock data set, put yourself in the mind of a PR person and, and play with like, okay, I want to analyze sentiment, see what kind of trends that you can get from sentiment. Um, and anytime you have data of your own, pivot tables save you so much time. Got it? I'll, I'll come up with some good more practice activities for you. Um, okay, so just as a reminder, I will not be here on Friday. I'll be over at the UC presenting, so just watch the video lecture. Again, use some of that time to maybe play around with your mock data sets. And next week, we'll talk about information design. So we'll kind of think about a little bit more of data visualization um, and start really talking about how you can sort of create your reflections, your posts, and start getting into presenting stuff to folks. Thanks, y'all. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye.